Here is poet Susan Cook Thanes in a reading of her original work. We have some wonderful readers tonight, um, people who have been reading poetry in and around the South Shore for a long time. And um, I'm so happy that they agreed to come and read for you, for us. And we're going to start with Susan Thanis. And she's going to tell you a little bit about herself and read you some poems. Good evening, everyone. And so I'm really pleased to be here. This is wonderful to be part of this hometown group, uh, although I live a couple of towns over in Duxbury. But I, I love poetry. I began writing several years ago um, when I had a poet laureate, um, excuse me, had a poet come to, to teach in my high school. And she had a class for teachers after school. That was back in the 70s, a long time ago. But I do love being here, and I thank you very much for listening. I'm going to begin with a poem about, that, that is about me when I was quite young. Lemon Aid. Freckles galloped across the bridge of my nose, new spots appearing each summer. They'll fade, you'll see, everyone said when I was 12. But not believing them, I'd sneak into the kitchen, peer inside the refrigerator to look for a lemon tucked under the lettuce in the bin below. Then, with knife in hand, I'd creep upstairs, hoping no one was in the bathroom. The blade, sliding beneath the peel, released a pungent spray from the pulp I rubbed on my cheeks and nose, blinking back tears. Now, I wish I still had those freckles instead of the ones covering my arms and hands. <laughs> and I prefer my lemon on lobster or in tea. <laughs> and this other one, this next one, is, does sort of fit being here with you wine drinkers. You remember during COVID how we always went out masked everywhere and sometimes we could not even get inside the stores where we were going. And this is about um, when I, the first time I went to the liquor store to buy some wine. Liquor store hold up. Face masked, I strode up to the bar door and said, give me two bottles of wine. <laughs> My credit card poised like a snub-nosed pistol the woman guarding the door warned, you wait here, and slid back inside holding my credit card. I waited and wondered what was taking so long. Finally, returned with two bottles, different sizes. She asked, which one? I replied, give me both. <laughs> it's amazing what fun to go around masked. If I had paid with cash, she wouldn't even have known who the masked bandit was as I made my getaway. <laughs> this, the next poem I'd like to read is, is an ekphrastic poem. And, it, and I love the, the, the artist, and I do paint too, the artist Vincent Van Gogh, but he's always just loved his work anyway. And at the Museum of Fine Arts, we have a few paintings by him, one of which is called Rulam the Postman, this painting. And my, my um, poem is called Hanging a Print of Rulam the Postman. Dear friend, let me look into your eyes, blue as the serge suit you are wearing. You deserve so much more than the gold on your jacket. It cannot repay your relationship with my first love, the Dutchman, whom you alone befriended when he was living in Arles. Yes, I know you are married, have five children. I've often watched your wife rock the cradle, crooning her lullaby. Your older son once spent time in the small room off my bedroom. Now you inhabit my guest room. It's so much better having you here, you see. In the past, the only way I could spend time with you was at the Museum of Fine Arts, and then it was never in private. 
Someone was always looking over my shoulder. Please give me your gnarled hands. Let me massage those arthritic fingers. You know you must keep them in shape. You still have many more years to deliver papers. What a pity you'll never receive mine. And, and um, the last poem I'd like to read is about an experience that I had about a year or a year and a half ago, and I think maybe some of you have had the same experience uh, about numbers on the highway. Turn here. Yesterday, I left home for exit 6A in Plymouth, but drove right by it. 6A was nowhere in sight. When I found myself at the bridge to the Cape, I knew it wasn't right. It was a bridge too far. Confused, I headed home to exit 10, but it had doubled its number to 20. I was Charlie on the MTA, unable to reach my destination. Now I couldn't even find my home. What in tarnation could I do? My only thought was to take any exit and find a route I knew by heart. What peace, what comfort to find a familiar highway. I turned left, kept driving past signs for Gulf Gas and Dunkin' Donuts, feeling so relieved I missed my road, but had a lovely drive in the countryside before I turned around and rolled right into my driveway. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button before you go. We'll see you next time.